Good evening, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Night Live in the City with your favorite hymn, Jermaine Jones. I am Catrice Cornett, and tonight I'll be the interviewer. Um, I'm starting off the show tonight because Jermaine is actually going to be our special guest tonight. Um, two weeks ago, he started telling, sharing his American Idol journey with us, and tonight is we're going to finish up with part two. Tonight, we're going to get into some of the dirty details of what happened. And the thing that I like about tonight is over 10 years ago, this happened to Jermaine, and he has not been able to tell his story because of legal reasons, because of other types of reasons. But now he is able to share with you his story. And I believe that all of us need to sometimes share the truth about what happened to us in order for us to be propelled into our future. And so I believe that this is a part of the healing process for not just Jermaine, but for his career and for our family. And so I am excited tonight to be interviewing him. So right after this commercial, we will be right back with some hot topics with Jermaine Jones, your favorite hymn. Welcome to Sunday Night Live in the City with your favorite hymn, Jermaine Jones, at 7 p.m. on Sundays on Facebook and on YouTube. You can also catch us on all social media platforms with the most current events, hottest entertainment news, and what's going on with the hottest independent artists. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to Sunday Night Live in the city with your favorite hymn. As you can see, I'm coming to you guys from my bedroom this Sunday, but um, I wanna get into some hot topics. But before I do, I'm going to play this video for you. And after I play this video from my girl, Tori Kelly, but first let me give you a little bit about her. Tori Kelly is a Grammy Award winner. Um, out of my favorite pop artists, and I say pop artists, because Tori will run you. You got to be careful. She'll give you a little, you know what I mean? But um, Tori Kelly and Jesse J are two of my favorite pop artists outside of Celine Dion. But it's, it's different. But listen to this. Her national anthem, she did it at the Kentucky Derby. And here it goes. Grammy winner Tori Kelly sings our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam. Who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight? Or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming? Oh, say does that star spangled 
Okay, so moving on from Tori Kelly, um, this man bought his house in 1998 for $290,000. He owes $440,000 in mortgage payments on his home. Now, see, y'all thought this pandemic helped y'all over a year. This man gonna have to level y'all up. Y'all might have to get into what he got going on because, hold on one second. Let me get to it. But long story short, this man has been there since 1998 and he made one mortgage payment. And let's be clear, he's still there. So a long island man who only had ever made one mortgage payment, um, he definitely used the courts to stay in his home for 23 years, 23 years for free. I See, I just want y'all to hear what I'm saying. So um, I post the article on my page, but Mr. Hansel is 52 years old. He claimed bankruptcy seven times to avoid being booted. It's the bankruptcy for me. So I guess... If they putting you out and you want to stay in your house, I guess file bankruptcy. I, really, the, on, the honest thing, you pay your mortgage. Don't live beyond your means. But um, So this man has a 2,081 square foot home, which he bought, like I told you, for $290,000. Um, two and a half bathroom. He has other people living with them. Um, he's been in foreclosure, like I told you. He's been in there for 23, 23 years with making one mortgage payment. I want to be very clear, y'all. 23 years and one mortgage payment. Right. So, moving on from him. Let's talk about... I, I, just, I was just talking about him two seconds ago. Blueface. Blueface. Let's talk about Blueface. Y'all. Now, there's a video that went viral this week. Now, the video that went viral had him, you know, in a home with females in a bunk bed. Um, he had a dispute with one of the females who didn't want to get a tattoo. With the tattoo, it's probably his name. I'm not sure, allegedly. But this isn't alleged. There's a fact that there was a camera rolling around in the home with about 13 females in there. Now, he went to Twitter and said that he's shooting a show and the females are in one home, he's in another home. They'll interact with each other, so forth and so on. So then as the social media started comparing him to R. Kelly and saying he had a sex cult and things like this, he said, what's a cult? Sorry. Hey, Siri, what is a cult? In modern English, a cult is a social group that is defined by its unusual religious, spiritual, or philosophical beliefs, or by its common interest in a particular personality, object, or goal. Do you want me to keep reading? No, you don't need to keep reading, Siri. Thank you so much. So I want to be very clear. If he did, because on his Twitter, he said WTF is a cult. So... Even if you didn't know what a cult was, you see how fast I found out? As I digress, moving forward. Let's talk about Jay-Z. When I say this, oh no, hell no. <laughs> I'm getting my hair like that, y'all. But Jay-Z just sold title for $350 million. 
The man is already worth a billion. And he just sold title and not the whole thing, a percentage for $350 million to Mr. Dorsey, who owns Facebook, who's worth over $13 billion. Y'all, when I say some people say Jay-Z made the wrong move. Some Listen, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, Jay-Z, good job, sir. Good job. Not saying nothing about title, but it's best to get out when it's up. Good job, sir. Very good job. So I thank y'all for tuning into the Hot Topics with Sunday Night Live in your city with your favorite hymn. I want to thank all my sponsors. And after this commercial break, We'll be coming back with my beautiful and we'll be giving you the details about my story. Kendra Jones from K Vision Fashion Design and Stylist. Lady Ray from Lady Ray's Cuisine, Healthy Choice and Sweet Treat. Catrice from Cat's Crochet, Handmade with Love, Customized Crochet. Tia from Chef Tia's Cooking, Delicious meal prep and catering. Rob from Humag Distribution for TV and video. And I would like to give a special thank you to the executive producer of the show from HP Visual Connections, my mother, Catrice Cornette. So if you're an entrepreneur or a small business, contact us today so you can advertise on Sunday Night Live in the city with your favorite hymn, Jermaine Jones. Looking for advertisement? Your favorite hymn is here for you. On Sunday Night Live in the City with Jermaine Jones, we have advertisement for independent artists and small businesses, where you can expand your brand, promote your product to over 10,000 of our unique and creative viewers and followers. So here's what I got to know. When you walked into that room with the producers, before you even sat down, were you told by American Idol, hey, we're going to kick you off the show and we're going to do it on camera? No, I was actually getting ready for rehearsal and getting ready to go downstairs and do some press. And security had asked me to come down um, that they needed to speak with me. And I walked right into the room and it was all camera and eyes on me. So as you were walking to the room, you had to imagine something was going on. What was going through your mind at the time? I mean, you know, with the show, you never know. So I didn't know what was going on. They so just you didn't think it was something bad necessarily? No, not necessarily. So they just let me know that production wanted to speak to me, and that was that. So. And then when you get in there and you see the two chief producers of the show, did your heart sink a little bit, or you just were like, I don't know what's going on I mean, on I, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So not until, you know, they began talking to me about it did I... Some people are accusing Idol today of exploiting this whole thing for ratings. Do you feel that way at all? Well, um, I'm not sure, and I don't, you know, I haven't even tried to take my mind into that and why they did what they did and all of that, because then I'll drive myself crazy, you know, trying to figure out why they did what they did. But um, I know that when I filled out my application, I circled yes, that I was previously arrested before. And, um... You know, they did a background check on me, and there was some information that I had to obtain a lawyer to take care of before I could even be on, you know, the show. And I took care of that information, and I thought that, you know, I took care of everything that I needed to take care of to, you know, be an active member of the show. And then, obviously not. We've seen it in the past where Idol contestants have been asked to leave the show, not because they were eliminated in the competition, and they didn't show what happened. Right. So, so, how does that, so how does that make you feel? I mean, I, I just can't even imagine, and the whole world got to see it, too. I mean, to an extent, you know, you feel a great disappointment, you know, because I, you know, trusted them. But yeah. um, it was a very humbling experience, and um, I learned a lot, you know, and I learned a lot about myself. And so, I mean, it was a very humbling experience for me. What Now, hold on before you start the gloves are off i was bamboozled and it's a bunch of malarkey i want y'all to know look when i just watched that it took me back to be very clear 
I want to be like Windex on glass cure, like when your glass is so clear that the bird thinks they can fly through and they'll smash the glass. I want to be that clear. I was bamboozled, hoodwinkled, and Hollywood just I don't okay, know. Okay, well, I know we're gonna get we're gonna get into the meat of it, but let's just um I want to kind of like take it step by step, you know, where we ended off last um the last part of the interview. And for those of you who don't know, when this happened to Jermaine, it just, just didn't happen to him. It happened to our entire family. And that's the thing that really and bothers friends. friends. Yeah, they church pastors. No they, one was safe. No one was, yeah, no one was sacred. They were calling everyone. They were trying to get a story of some kind of dirt on Jermaine from everyone. It was just, it was just horrible. It was like our whole world was invaded in and in the wrong way. So let's just get that clear and put that out there. So um let's start from the beginning. So you go to American Idol. Let's just start with the process in the in just in getting a ticket to the next round like talk about like once you got that gold ticket and i remember we went up to um north jersey i think it was north jersey new york somewhere we stood in line and we were there the whole entire day let's just talk about that day everything that they take you through just in that day well um since we're going to speak about the audition process what you see on TV, it's three or four. It depends on how far. It depends on if they want to see more from you or not. How many auditions before you get to the judges? So what you see is fake anyway. We stand out in line. I mean, the time I was in Minneapolis, I met so many people in line. And by the time I, that's probably why I didn't make it that year, because we sat out line and sang for 24 hours to be in the front of the line. After you get the front of the line passes, let's be very clear. I want to be Windex on glass clear. Transparency is it for me. So what I'm saying is that you're outlining all these hours in the elements, and they want you to come in there and be at your best. So you go in there. You deal with all of that. You get through that process. You go and sing in front of, and mind you, it's like a um, cattle call. So like, let's say it's at the Wells Fargo Center. There are... A hundred stations around in the middle of the basketball arena. Just imagine this with cubicles, like you work in a call center. Like when you go to vote, like those type of cuticles? No, when you go to perform. Yeah, no, thinner than that. Thin oh, wow. Cubicles. But what I'm saying is, so I need to focus on my note, my energy, what I'm delivering to you with everything that's going on around me in this. So you can hear other people singing while you're singing. Yes, ma'am. They're just, and it's not even the judges or nothing. It's production assistants. And the thing that bothered me, um, the one year that I swore I was prepared and they didn't put me through the first round because every year I went, I made it through the first round. When I went down south, I didn't make it back the first round. And one thing I wanted to know is what qualifies you to tell me that I'm not worth it? And they could, the person that judged me didn't know nothing about music. And that's what I'm saying. They were looking for an image. And that time I was standing outside. I just drove all the way from New Jersey. It was so many things involved. I'm judging me on this. Right, right. Okay, so we, you got through the first round with all of that stuff. Now, after you make it in front of... But in New Jersey, the judges weren't in New Jer North Jersey no, when we went there. That's what I'm saying. It's all a hoax. The judges weren't in New Jersey. They flew me to Portland, Oregon, where I auditioned for the judges. But everybody thinks that happened in New Jersey. That was not in New Jersey where I initially auditioned. I made it past the first round, the first two rounds. Yeah, New Jer but North Jersey was like the second or the second or third round. The right, second no, round. No, I did two rounds in one day with North Jersey. So Right, the and then they went, but didn't they... But now, don't they take you through, because I remember having to answer some questions, like me and your sister, and then we had to go in the room, and they talked to the families as well once you got past that second round. Like, it was like a psych eval or something like that. 
Mom, Talk about I, that. I did psych evaluations. I did background checks. I did. I mean, like literally, when I was in Portland, Oregon, when I got my golden ticket, when you know American Idol showed me driving up in the car and you screaming on the phone and all of that, we'll post that clip to y'all because it's funny with the, the, the picture they showed in my mom at the bottom. But um, when they played that song, I set fire to the rain. They came to the house and did all that. All that was set up to. Let's be very clear. I knew when it was coming. I cleaned my room. My room is never that clean. I just need y'all to know. I knew they was coming. I cleaned my room. I hung up my best clothes. We, that's what I'm saying. The real of it is this. That's not real. But so moving forward, you go there and they tell you you need to bring clothes to last you for months, but they're only paying for one bag. Y'all know how to move the... Well, my God, the day. I'm going from my room, y'all. I should have shut my windows. I'm sorry, but I like to breathe. Yeah, my but windows are open, too. So if you hear the cars ride by, we really outside today. I'm on my sun porch. And, Mom, I'm sitting right here on the edge of my bed with both windows up and the sand blowing. But it feels good. Yeah, it feels amazing. But what I am saying is that the process is not what they make it seem to you. So after you did all the psych evals and everything, then you, we, in the um, news clip that we saw, they talked about, you talked about how we had to get lawyers and we did. I remember having to hire a lawyer to get some things cleared up that they wanted off of your record or whatever. Um, and so let's talk, let's, let's touch on that a little bit okay. before I get to the next part. Okay. So, um, once I made it, once I went through New Jersey and went through those two two rounds, I went to Portland, Oregon. I went through that round, and Jennifer Lopez said yes. Steven Tyler said yes. Randy Jackson said yes. I'll post that clip too, y'all. Even though I hate it because I was so nervous, I was sweating. I couldn't even. I see. think we showed that we showed that clip uh, like a couple weeks ago when you first announced that you was going to do American Idol. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So when you sang Luther, right? You sang Luther Vandross. Long ago and oh so far away. That I mean, no, you sang the house. Mm -mm. Don't give a man me. Yeah, baby. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was it. So that was in Portland, Oregon. I got accepted in New Jersey. I went to two two rounds in New Jersey. Then I went back home to Pine Hill, New Jersey, and then. They called me back. The judges would be in Portland, Oregon. So they flew me out to Portland, Oregon. We did that audition process. And what was the question, Mommy? After you, um, that they were in the news clip, you were talking about how you had to get some stuff cleared up with the, we had to hire okay. lawyer. So in Portland, Oregon, after I got my golden ticket, I was in my hotel and everything and all this I could not leave Portland, Oregon. I met with private investigators. I met with, I mean, they knew stuff about me that I forgot about myself. So, in going home, there was some stuff that they wanted me to clean up off my record. I don't know why you want me to be the boy next door. They dubbed me the gentle giant. Ain't nothing gentle about me but my spirit. Talk to me nice. No, I'm just... <laughs> He's no, the but... truth. Just, I mean, we're being real. It's the truth. They no, loved him I'm that. Serious. No, you they, didn't ask for that. You didn't ask for that title. Right. Jennifer Absolutely. Lopez said he's gentle spirited. He's the gentle giant. No, right. somebody broke that and told her to say that. Because I was so frustrated with them. It was beyond me. And we're going to get to that part when they had me fly, when we flew out there. We're going to get to that part. But so before they brought me back, we had to hire an attorney. We had to go to the court. Play. The attorney took care of everything. And they're like, you're ready to go. So I fly out to California. Yeah. And so when, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to move ahead of myself. So now you're in California and um, all of this, you know, you're doing the shows. You did the third, the, um, you know, the group. It was like 300 to this and this. Yeah. yeah it was like group competitions and, you had the um the duo 
competition that you had to do. So tell me how they pair you up. Like, do you have a choice? Do they say it? Like, how did you, how do they pick the groups? And do you see the judges? Who does, who actually picks the groups? The executive producers pick the groups. The executive producers knew who was going, we knew who was going to win the show from the Las Vegas round. We all okay. knew who was going to win. We knew who was going to win. Okay. Your vote does not matter. If you watch it, watch it for entertainment. Don't waste your time. So, with that being said, um, we knew. We knew who was going to win from the Las So, when Vegas. they put you together in a group with people, like, what if... Like, he was not mom. They tried to set me up. But one thing they couldn't do is, and I need to post that video, they could not discredit. You can, I mean, even if you listen to the intonation and the quality of me and this man, young voice. Okay, this young man's voice, excuse me. Um, I was in a totally different group. After yeah. I, did, I was... And they told me I had to sing with him. And they gave me the song. That wasn't the song I wanted. Right. Even when I sang Knocks Me Off My Feet, that's not the song that I chose. I chose Anita Baker. I had to choose something from my birth year. Okay. I chose Sweet Love. Okay. They told me to sing Knocks Me Off My Feet. Okay. So. so no, you don't have a choice. Oh, wow. So now tell me how you felt about the um like Jimmy Iveen and the um when they when they actually so you know how on the voice they actually work with the contestants or whatever. So who was it? Mary J. Blige and Jimmy Iveen? When Jimmy Iveen and Mary J. Blige said he is record ready, he's ready to go, this, that, and the third. I ain't heard from Jimmy or Mary. <laughs> <laughs> So did they actually... So if I know somebody that's ready to go, because MTR Sounds, we have a distribution label. And if I hear somebody that's ready to go, what am I going to do to them? We going. We going. So, but let me say, let me ask you this. So did they actually work with your voice, train you, or was that just like filmed? Like, uh -huh. did you did you have a vocal session with them? Yeah. So it was only what we saw on the camera. Only what you saw on the camera. My vocal coach was Miss Bird. It was an African American. Oh, I remember lady. her. American out of fired her because she is. <clears throat> I remember her. I love Miss Bird. So Mary J. Blige didn't give me no advice. Jimmy Iveen didn't give me no advice. J. Lo didn't give me no advice. Steven Tyler didn't give me no advice. Randy Jackson didn't give me no advice. It was Miss Bird who was my vocal coach and Michael Orland. Okay, yeah, I remember them. I remember them. Yeah, I remember them. Okay, okay. Yeah, I remember. I remember meeting fake. them. Again, fake. We were, I remember meeting them when we were in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. They were very good, very nice people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we went through that, and then now you did the, um, you know, the little TV things, and they showed you on the TV and everything. I want to talk about the commercial for the Ford commercial. Oh, where, my where you're peeping behind, commercial. where you're peeping behind the building, like, and then they took you out the commercial or whatever. I want to talk about that. Okay, so I was so excited when they showed it on TV and everything. And then it they was took so me out cool. the commercial, but listen, this is the whole thing. This is the whole entire thing. We did the Ford commercial. Before the Ford commercial, I went through the whole audi audition process. I went through the whole judging process. I went through the whole vetting process. They even called me back at this point when I told yeah, you they right. were setting me up. Yeah, yeah. You went through because the 24, all of that. When the executive producers called my house and... They said they wanted to speak to me. My mom answered the phone. And for what? Okay, you already kicked me off the show. Like, so for what? Yeah, they kicked you off on the green. You, you on did, the you green mile. disqualified when, on the green mile the when, first time. When Not disqualified, wanted, but you didn't make it to the next round. Right. Yeah. And then 
they wanted to take credit for my musical ability. That's when we went backstage and I hit behind you. Yeah. And they asked what I was going to do. And you said he's going to continue to do what he's been doing. Right. Right. I don't want to offend nobody or anything like that, but I'm going to say what I got to say. You're not the great white coat. Okay. Yeah. I've been who I am. I'm going to do what I do. And it's not by no goodness of my own. It's a gift. Right. And only thing I wanted to do was share my gift with the world. And yeah. they took it and they just ripped it apart. Exploited it, tried to tear it down. It was horrible. It was horrible. It's horrible and it was what they all do. Because I just wanted to share my gift. It was no more, no less. Yeah. As a child, I dreamt about being on the stage and singing. I thought I had that opportunity. And again, I was bamboozled. Yeah. So let talk tell us about the commercial. So oh I, I went off track. So the commercial I've been on, you know, we've been they know I'm six, eight and a half. They have all of my measurements and everything. When it's time to do commercial, look, I'm trying to look for something in my closet. But they, okay, so when it was time to do commercial, the stylists that are paid to style us. Had nothing my size. You and in I'm California old. with the La LA Lakers and all of these basketball people and these stars, and they don't have nothing to fit you? I'm telling my story. This is my truth. They were antagonizing and provoking me. They wanted a reaction. So, yeah. I wanted them to know there is no way that you can't tell me with all the money you have, the stylists, and as long as you knew I was coming here that you couldn't get my sizes. Yeah. So what they did was during the commercial, y'all, they cut my clothes. My pants was cut up the back. My shirt was cut up the back and duct tape. I called my mom crying and she called her pastor on the phone. I needed prayer because there was no way that you can- You on a major TV show, like national TV show with duct tape up your back? No. How ghetto fabulous is that? A Ford commercial. Not just a TV show, a Ford commercial. Commercial, yeah. And I was supposed to be okay with that. Wow. Wow. No, what I think it is, is you were just supposed to be grateful that they gave you a chance to be on American Idol or, or whatever and just so starstruck and no. overwhelmed with... What I was supposed to be was like Ruben Stutter, excuse me, and I said it because he talked about me on CNN, not saying nothing bad about him, but like Ruben Stutter, I can allow them to just say whatever, do whatever. Like, I'm not that. Like, yeah, you try to get into my family business. I'm here to, to sing. sing, to sing, period. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're, but they're, they're, they're trying to make money and they're trying to make some dollars and this and that or whatever, but. We're going to take a brief break and we're going to be right back. I'm going to show you a little bit of clip of um, what happened when Jermaine walked into the office to talk to the executive uh, producers. And I don't know what is going to happen after we um, show because we're showing this on Facebook and YouTube. And I, you know, right, like, Whatever it really doesn't matter happens. because right now the truth is the truth. And I know we lived it and it was horrible. And they should, and I, believe that it's time for us people who know God, who understand our gifts and our callings on our lives to stand up and speak out against these people and these entities and these so-called, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, mountains or whatever they are, mountains of entertainment and all of that kind of stuff. These entities that think that they can just destroy people's lives for a dollar or to make themselves rich and they don't care about the the effects Hold of what happens. The thing institution is the word that I the institute for. right. And then the thing that I was about to say is the thing that is beyond me is that the name that God gave you to give me, they own that. Yeah. The, the likeness in the image that God gave me, they, they own, own that. Yeah. I mean, I can't post a pic. We're gonna get into it. Good. Play your stuff, mom. 
<laughs> All right. So here's a here's a small clip of um Jermaine as he's walking in what this is what they showed on TV. So and play everybody saw out there, mom. Everybody saw it already. What'd you say? I wanted that somewhere out there. It, woo! They didn't want that somewhere out there out there. Yeah. I nailed that. Yeah, this everything's in this clip. So earlier in the show, we told you that one of our finalists had to be eliminated from the competition due to information that just surfaced with the help of law enforcement. I can now tell you that person is Jermaine Jones. Our executive producer sat down with him just last night. Take a look at this. Hi, Jermaine. Hello. How you doing, man? Hi. Just sit down there for a moment, Hello. mate. Thank you. Jermaine, there's a number of things been going on this week with stories that have been told, have not been told. Uh, and we've been given further information that I need to talk to you about. Okay. Um, in March of last year, you were charged, criminally charged, giving a fake name to the police. Okay. Of Joel Jones. In November of last year, again, you were criminally charged and you gave him a fake name of Kareem Watkins. Uh, you didn't disclose those charges to us. There are four active warrants out for you, actually, to be honest, Jermaine, um, which surprised us, to be truthful. You know, we're not judgmental at all. Lots of kids come to us that have problems. It, it's, it's part and parcel of, of, of what kids go through today, and we know that. If they come clean with us and tell us at the beginning, we can help them. But you did know that you were incumbent to tell us the truth about all of this, and it appears that you, you just haven't on any level. And what happened with what we're told was a fight? It wasn't a fight. I wasn't fighting. What happened was I had fell down the steps carrying my bags, and the police and the paramedics came because I actually couldn't walk. I have screws in my foot. I see. But we weren't, nobody was fighting. Why were you charged? Then? Me and one of my other friends had a disagreement um, but it wasn't like there was any fists fighting or any, like, you know, yes. anything like that. Why couldn't you tell us any of this before? I mean, I just, I just was scared, nervous. I didn't want to get judged. I didn't want to get penalized for, you know, anything that happened in the past. I was just hoping that I could just pay it, yeah. you know, and get it taken care of. Yeah. And it just didn't work out that way. Well, right. the, the fact is we are not allowed to have anybody that has an outstanding warrant against them on the program. And okay. you've got four of them against you. You've mm -hmm. put us in a very delicate position, really. Um, you know, I apologize uh, greatly. we have to let you go, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, it's the end of the road. I really am, too. Yeah. I think uh, this I've is... got to say, we both, I mean, we've just both listened to you sing, and you are absolutely fantastic. That's the best week. song you've ever sung. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity and everything. Thank you very much, mate. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. All the best, mate. Bye bye. You got to unmute your thing, Jermaine. So as we already told you, let me let me say this. As we already told you, we had to get lawyers. We went to court. We had to... Um, he came back home from Portland. We had to clear up. There was no warrants. There was no secrets. Jermaine, we... It, I still, I, I should have bought the document on the show. I still have the document and the paperwork. It's about this thick of everything that we had to do in order for him to even get past Portland. So everything that you saw in that clip was just fabricated. The best part about it was the song at the end. And 
I I commend Jermaine for his behavior in that time. And I believe what he's saying, they were trying to get a reaction. They needed a certain reaction. They wanted to portray him as something that he is not. He comes from good stock. And so regardless of the mistakes that we all make in our lives, I think that it is very low for an institution that size to take somebody like Jermaine or anyone, a teenager, especially because first of all, American Idol, you're dealing Mom, with teenagers. You can't even be over 25. Mom, listen to me. destroy them like that. Mom, I'm glad that I can handle it. Do you know how many people committed suicide over American Idol? Right, like stuff like so that. Let's like, talk about statistics. There are people who have killed themselves over this process. Over the process. And it's sad. And it's sad because it doesn't have to be that way. Like, why do you have to step on somebody else's neck, literally, and bring them down, try to destroy them in order for you to look good? Then it's not, to me, it's not worth it, or you shouldn't be doing it. Mom, we had to say, they're blacklisting me. What is little old Jermaine Jones going to do to 19 Entertainment, American Idol, Jimmy Iovine, and Interscope? Yeah, I'm, and I said what I said. What is little old Jermaine Jones That's right. going to do to 19 Entertainment, Jimmy Iovine, Interscope, or American Idol? It was no need for them to blacklist me. Let right. me be in my lane. Yeah. It's the truth. You didn't want me. Right. Right. So then, okay. So now we done went through that process, and you're off the show. And they're supposed to be, like, they're supposed to actually... Manage like you. Re they're responsible for these people, like these kids, these teenagers. And you, don't, you don't hear back from them. These they, young adults. Likeness, you can't post anything. You can't make no songs. You can't do anything. But you can't get them on the phone either. Make it make right. sense to me. So, so once he came off the show, we set up a uh, welcome home because Jermaine's loved where he is. Yeah. You know, like people love him. Like. You know, he gets invited out. Like, we just, I mean, he's well-known here. He was that before he went on the show. And so it's like, um, so we did a thank a thank, thank you concert and, like, a welcome home concert for Jermaine to come back home. We had, it was a lot of the um, local recording artists and some big-name artists came out. Some of his friends that he had met along the American Idol tri trail Came Dominic, out, and, Dominic. yeah. Dominic Easton, he came and he performed, and you know all of that. Still friends today, but to, if you believed everything that you saw on TV, you would be like, "Oh my God, who is this guy?" You know, but that's not the truth. And so, and it, the thing, what people don't understand is that y'all, and when I want, I want to put my finger to the camera, y'all. You see that? How can I get it closer, y'all? <laughs> you just. And you go off what people say, and you don't know the story. Right. You don't know how they were sitting out in front of our house, and we couldn't even go to the grocery store. Right. And our neighbors had to go to the grocery store for us. You don't know how they were at my bedroom window with a camera. You don't know how, when I went out in public, people were calling me a liar, and this and that, and the third. And it yep. wasn't a lie. I just couldn't tell the truth because I had a... The, yeah, all of these stipulations the order that was on me was beyond was, me. Yeah, it was crazy. It was like crazy. Like, why can't we tell? Why can't we tell outside of the story? Because it's not real, Cause, right? Because their story is not real. So we got off. We planned this concert. So I'm thinking, okay, we'll do flyers because that's what I do, right? Everybody know me. That's what I do. We made some flyers. The flyers were dope. We had American Idol on them. We had this picture on there. They told us we had to change little old us down here in Philly. Like, why are you even watching what we're doing? How do you even know but, but that this is what I'm we had the flyer? With, they told us we couldn't use his picture. We couldn't use the logo, this and that or whatever. So I'd be darn. That's, I, I carried him for nine months. How about we used the picture? We did take the logo off. I'm going to tell you one thing. And I'm going to keep using his picture. I made that man. I did not want to keep using... American Idol. No, but he did not. The platform and the things that I went through, 
I will be, I can say this word, I'll be damned. I'm going to tell yeah. you. And so, if I don't say we told him, we told, Jones from me, American Idol. Yep, me and my girlfriend Sherry from Supreme Gospel Entertainment, you know, all of them, the, you know, our crew, they just got behind us and they were like, you earned this title, Jermaine. We're going to use it everywhere we go. You, what, everything they put you through, you deserve it. You earned it. We're using it. We still use it to today. Like, for instance, we got this, and I'm going to put this plug in there. We got a worship telethon coming up next Saturday. And Jermaine is our guest celebrity host. He's a celebrity. How many of you can say that you made it to national TV and saying with this and that or whatever, all of that kind of stuff? That's rare. Like, Mom, everybody man, doesn't Mom, get that. Mom, I even go down for because I'm going to tell you something. Even to this day, people try to discredit what I've done. Right. But I don't know too many people I can Google to say they sat with Mary J. Blige, P. Diddy, Jimmy Iovine, J. Lo. I'm talking about hug J. Lo, like, like that. So I don't care what anyone says about Jermaine Jones. I've been there. I've done it. I live my dream. I've done it. And people still try to discredit me to this day. I just dealt with a situation a couple of days ago. They still try to discredit me. I am him. And you want to know why? Because of my, I sustain, I persevere, and it gets hard. I didn't want to come, I did not even want to do this show today. I'm tired. Yep. 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 So we just wanted to, I, I am grateful for this platform. Jermaine, Thought it up last the end of last year. He was like, Mom, I want to do a show. I just want to, I want it to be raw. I want it to be real about what's going on in the industry so that people can know the difference because we are here. Literally, we keep saying it because I know it's hard to believe because it's hard to believe when people come alongside me and really want to help me you too. You know how many wolf tickets we got? Right. It's hard for me to believe too. But we are really, really, truly here for the independent artists. We've been down those roads. We know what it's like when people just want to manipulate you, exploit you, tear you down for no reason. And all you want to do is share your gift. We get it. We really get it on both sides, church and secular church and the world, and this, both sides. Is, I, I get it. I'm going to tell you something. I don't want to discredit the church in me, but what I'm saying is that with MTR sound, you have the best of both worlds because Anytime you call my mom, you can have a word of prayer. Me, <laughs> I'm the other side. So that's why you get the best of both worlds. But don't come between my relationship. Because me and him got a relationship that ain't like nobody's business. So that's, you know what I mean? But you do get the best of both worlds with MTR Sound. Yeah. So we just, um, I'm just excited I'm excited for Jermaine because he finally got to tell his story. I'm excited that you are watching it and listening and that you are here, which means uh, means to us, even the haters, we, everybody needs haters because they propel us, I believe it, into our Mom, next destiny. Because you know what? Mom, I can show you better when, than I can tell you. When I told you, <laughs> don't block them. Don't block, don't block them. Don't block, don't block Let him nobody. see how God is growing you, don't how he's leveling you because up. Because the table, the enemy, your enemies have to be there because the yep. table will be prepared in the face of your enemies. That's what it says. Don't get rid of them. Let them sit That's what sing. it says. That's what it says. Let them sit so, sit. Yep. So I'm excited that Jermaine was able to share with all of you, those of you who love him and those of you who have been following Sunday Night Live. For since we started, we got Thank regulars. You. Like if we don't come on, they're like, "There's no show. There's no show." And so, like we are so excited that he got to share that with you. Only because I believe that this is the beginning of the end for the beginning of the new for him. And you I really understand believe that. how free I feel. You mm -hmm. probably don't understand. Is it? This is probably going to release some of my anxiety. You don't understand how free I feel now that. Because when people have a gag order on you and they blacklist you, like, who am I? I'm just a little old. Well, I ain't little, but I'm just, a, you know, from Pine Hill, New Jersey. What? Right. So, yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't. He had, he had songs up on um, 
We had I to take means we had released a song, a single when he first came off. They made us take that down, and it was an original. They didn't even have anything to do with it. We hired the band. We paid for production. We paid for everything. They had absolutely nothing to do with it, and they made us take it down. So I'm telling you, it's been a long road. I don't know what's coming next, but I do know that it's good stuff. He's working right now on a single. You want to talk about that? No. I don't want to talk about that. No, I want to talk about that next week after we do after we go back to the studio on Friday. What I want to talk about is the competition. Okay, all right. So we do have a um a music a singing competition going on now. Who um, did the flyer? Who, I did the flyer. Who did the MTR Sounds website? I did. Oh my god. So listen, y'all. So listen, so we, we got this singing competition going on. You, We have three winners, because that's what I call it, because we have there's three places, first place, second place, and third place. So and you all everybody, win. Everybody going to get something. So um, it's um, called Raise, Raise Your Mic. Jermaine thought of that. It's pretty cool. Raise Your Mic. And it's for independent artists. Who are somebody? It, you have to have a song that is original. We only deal with we're only doing original music for this particular competition, and you can email us a MP4 format video, sixty seconds long, of just you singing acoustically or a cappella. No instrumentals, no bands. We not, we're not even having bands at the finals. You we are asking that your track be totally mixed and mastered and ready for distribution because we are a distribution company. So the winner will w win one year of distribution through MTR Sounds with all the bells and whistles. Who are we, who are we, distrib who are we distributed through? Sony Music, Sony Orchard Music, um, The Orchard. Sony Entertainment is our distribution company who we are affiliated with. And so you're on a major platform and it's one year with all the bells and whistles. And that's a lot of bells and whistles because we go all in with and for our artists. Second place is a one single deal. So we would distribute one single for you. And um, third place is an interview on this show with Jermaine for um, so on Sunday Night Live. And um, it's something else we give in third place. Uh, artist development consultation. Oh, art yeah. Mother. Yeah, you get an artist development um, consultation where we actually look at your Facebook page. We give you advice on how to upgrade your stuff and or whatever. We'll help you with getting your uh, brand and your with label Whatever together. reason why you didn't make it to two or one or whatever will be different. We'll just try to enhance and cultivate whatever right. you have to make you the best artist you can be. And right. so even with the third place prize, that don't mean that you can't take our information and come back to us and sign with us. It, I mean, yes. even the third place prize is a great prize. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure that everybody was going to get something. We're going to have industry execs and industry influencers and all of that kind of stuff as our judges. We're excited about that. And the um, finals will be in person live. We will also stream them here. And uh, no, everything is strictly on YouTube. Everything is strictly on YouTube. So um, we will we are going to be um, streaming just to our YouTube channel. We're not trying to do it on Facebook at all. So um, the first, the people who win from the video submissions, you win by your friends liking, subscribing, and voting for your video. So... You're going to have to uh, actually promote yourself, which is most of which is a part of being an independent artist. As an independent artist, I promote myself. I don't have a label. And that's what that means. You have to learn to promote yourself. And so that's what that is about. We are excited about that. I don't know what happened to Jermaine. Look like we have some technical difficulties. But um, anyway, we are going to we're, we're doing that. That's happening. It kicks it kicked off May 1st, actually. May 1st through May 17th, we are receiving video submissions now. So if that is you, I urge you to submit your video. We are advertising on Facebook and Instagram. So we are excited about that. We also have 
like I said, the, the um, telethon is happening on May 8th. If you are a worshiper, um, spoken word, you do poetry, you dance, whatever, we are looking for people to perform that day, minister that day, whatever you do, um, to help us raise funds for Davis Tent, New Jersey. Again, raise your mic, independent artists, singing competition. Um, sponsored by MTR Sounds through Sony Orchard for distribution will be on YouTube. I'm excited about the show tonight. I'm excited about Jermaine being able to share his story. I thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you next week here at seven for Sunday Night Live in the city with your favorite hymn. Kendra Jones from K-Vision Fashion Design and Stylist. Lady Ray from Lady Ray's Cuisine, Healthy Choice and Sweet Treat. Catrice from Cat's Crochet, Handmade with Love, Customized Crochet. Tia from Chef Tia's Cooking, Delicious Meal Prep and Catering. Rob from Humag Distribution for TV and Video. And I would like to give a special thank you to the executive producer of the show from HP Visual Connections, my mother, Catrice Cornette. So if you're an entrepreneur or a small business, contact us today so you can advertise on Sunday Night Live in the city with your favorite hymn, Jermaine Jones. Looking for advertisement? Your favorite hymn is here for you. On Sunday Night Live in the City with Jermaine Jones, we have advertisement for independent artists and small businesses, where you can expand your brand, promote your product to over 10,000 of our unique and creative viewers and followers.